Hey guys, welcome back to the Winter 98 releases demo disc for the PlayStation 1. And today we're going to be taking a look at Medieval, which of course is a uh, pretty fun gothic hack and slash game. Uh, very unique and a uh, pretty interesting early PS1 title. So let's jump right in. Now I've got to admit, I actually have already uh, played this demo through in a previous recording. Uh, but that recording was probably about maybe eight months ago, so I, I'm i still uh, running a little bit blind here. Uh, but hopefully it'll be a bit smoother than that first playthrough. Um, I finally got around, I finally found it on my computer and uh, I started editing it, but it, it just wasn't quite up to my standards, so I want to redo it and do a bit of a better job. Especially since this is a time demo, so we can get much further than I actually did. As you can see, we've got a great sense of atmosphere here, especially for early PS1. Uh, everything's pretty polygonal, but also has a good level of detail. So uh, they do quite well. This here is our hero, Daniel Fortescue. And here we have this lovely looking skeleton telling us to start a new game. He has apparently a very long arm, but uh, we will do just that. So for anyone that didn't actually uh, understand what that meant, uh, we're currently in Dan's Crypt, so basically what that showed us is uh, how our character died. Um, so he just got an arrow through the eye, lost the eye, and now he's been brought back as an undead uh, hero, I guess you could say. Sir Daniel Fortescue, see? The hero of Galomir who fell at the first charge. The fog of war and the shrouds of time conspire to turn the arrow fodder into the saviour of the day. But we know it's better. So as you can see, the game has full voice acting. <laughs> but Daniel just talks like that. Because he, of course he has no jaw, no <laughs> neck or anything. Fate has given it a second chance. A chance to forget the ignoble truth. A chance to defeat Zarak and live up to the legend. We hope it does well. I also appreciate the Gargoyles uh, Gollum style of speech. That's uh, quite fun. But a lot of the dialogue in this game is actually very fun from what I know. I've never actually played the full game, only ever this demo, but I have seen uh, full Let's Plays on YouTube, so... Okay, how do we read? Let's jump. Okay, so the same attack, the attack button is also the reading button. So you must be out of shape after a hundred years lying on your back. Use the crypt to get the crypts of your new lease on life. Um, okay, so before I did actually uh, do that, but I think this time we we'll might try and go a bit faster and, uh, you know, we'll try and get through a bit more of the game. Okay, well this looks interesting. I didn't actually find this in my last playthrough, so... I guess, though, it's just a bit of an oddly coloured wall tile. I don't know, maybe you can uh, come back here later with a different weapon. Okay, so there's throwing daggers. And uh, this definitely feels a little bit more like a, a D-pad game for precision. Uh, the analog stick is when you want to run around, but it doesn't actually allow you to have much precision. You move very oddly. But, okay, so we can grab this rune here. Jump over water. Smash open this treasure chest and get a copper shield. So that means we can block with the triangle button. Uh, there's some lovely, lovely money. We can jump with the circle button. Uh, we can do a charge attack or f actually throw a dagger. Um, oh, of course, that's because I've got throwing daggers uh, equipped right now. So we can press select and we can change our inventory. Yes, yeah, so the first time I played this, I actually did get a, did get a bit stuck. Uh, why am I only walking? There we go. Um, I did actually get a bit stuck on the throwing daggers, so we ended up using that for a little while. Uh, now, before I leave, actually, he does have one more weapon, and that's his arm. And uh, this is quite funny, because he can actually whack with his arm, or he can throw it like a boomerang. <laughs> so that's pretty fun. Um, they definitely obviously had a lot of fun with this game. It does have a little bit of a uh, horror style to it and that sort of thing. It is a bit dark, but it's... It, 
takes it doesn't take itself very seriously. It's all in good fun. Lovely world map right here. And uh, I didn't actually think we were that far away from the graveyard, but apparently so. So uh, Dan got a crypt very far away from all the zombies. Lucky him. So this is more where the PS1 limitations come in, because you can see that our draw distance isn't very much. Um, now they get away with it just from a style standpoint in this game. Um, but at the same time, it, you know, it, it obviously is, to our eyes now, a limitation of the system. Now, why am I simply walking? Is, uh... I feel like I should be running when I hold the analog stick, but, uh, I don't know, maybe my analog stick's just doing odd things. But, um, anyway. No, this is a bit odd, actually. Ah uh, well, we can uh, of course take out all the zombies, we can uh, charge up while running actually, which is a uh, nice improvement over Link for a Hurricane Slash. I'm probably not going to be doing too well, but uh, hopefully not too bad, I definitely shouldn't be dying anyway. Okay, so we've got the Earth Rune, so just like we saw in the Crypt, we should be able to unlock another door. Now funnily enough, you could actually use the right analog stick, not for camera control, but for uh, basically jumping and uh, doing a <laughs> roundhouse slash like that. Um, mainly because, you know, the analog stick of course wasn't around, or at least not very much anyway, it wasn't the primary uh, controller when this game was first released. So we can, we can strafe or lock on or something with the R1 and L1 buttons, and we can actually move the camera with the L1, oh, L2 and R2 buttons. But I do actually have to figure out why or what I've got to do. Um, you know, I thought this would go so much smoother now that I've already played the game. Ah, there we are. Just missing a very, very obvious thing. Now, thankfully, even though it's a small sword, it does actually have a fair degree of range, so we can just cut through these guys pretty easily. I do really appreciate, though, that the bodies actually stay on the ground. It's, uh... <laughs> when I remember the first time I played through the demo, actually, uh, you know, years and years ago, I was always worried that they would come back to life. Um, so that was actually something that added a bit to the horror element, which, uh, you know, is quite nice, and especially for PS1. I mean, there are many games now that just fade away the bodies. Um, they don't want to actually have them taking up any space on the map. But, um, okay, so I've done that now. I feel like I'm missing something very obvious. Oh, here we go! I'm just being incredibly silly again. <laughs> so that area over the other side was just an optional area. Um, the levels are actually designed in a very, uh, well, not, not non-linear as such, but there are a lot of different branching pathways and secret areas and things like that. Um, so it's definitely a world that you can explore. Now you see up in the top right corner there we have a little chalice icon. And uh, basically once that fills up to 100%, we can collect that purple thing over there. Um, but of course we can't actually do that until we kill enough enemies. So basically you've got to kill all the enemies, or at least a lot of the enemies in the level, to get it up to 100%, and then after that you can finally actually get the chalice. So we just need to, uh, for now we'll continue up this way. There is a secret back there, but we will get to that in a short while. Also I figured out my problem uh, with the running. You actually have to double tap to run. Um, but if you just hold the button, or the analog stick, you'll just walk normally. Um, so that is a bit different to what I thought. So the analog stick will make you walk and it will make you run. It's exactly the same. It's basically the D-pad is mapped to the analog stick. Alright, so we've got 92% now. Um, alright. I can't move the camera in every direction, unfortunately, but, uh, okay. <laughs> Guys coming out of, uh, coffins there, but the shells can now be collected. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to head back and I'll see you at the chalice. Okay, so here we are. Now to actually get to the chalice, we're going to have to hit this statue. And uh, this is saying that actually uh, caused me a bit of strife when I first played the demo uh, in the last recording. Um, I couldn't actually figure out how to get in here, but that's all you have to do. So the Hall of Heroes awaits, and hopefully this time you might actually get to see it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to come down this pathway. I'm not sure why the camera is reversed on us, but... Um, oh, I must need to hit it again. So there we go, that unlocks this little area here. And uh, you can see we actually get um, a new life bottle, uh, so that increases our maximum life, and also we get uh, some more money. But I did see some zombies, yep, there we are. 
You know, I've been using the sh uh, small sword for a little while now, so let's try out some throwing daggers. These are actually a pretty effective weapon, but as you can see, it actually puts me right off where I was before. So we can continue on. Uh, that's a pretty nice design, I think. Okay, so we've got uh, a gargoyle here. And he is essentially our shop, so we can uh, get some more throwing daggers. So we've got all 250, that's all we can buy anyway. Oh, but of course, more zombies. Um, if I can change the camera. Yep. So you can see that little uh, green thing that j is jumping around, that's actually our uh, targeting reticule. So I can charge up a dagger as well, and uh, it's much more effective then. There we go. So, as you can see, this can actually be quite effective at taking down enemies. And uh, I, I do really like the targeting reticule, it's very easy to follow, and uh, you know, it moves around. The only thing is, I'm not sure if you can actually change it. Um, like the position of it, uh, or which enemy it's targeting. Uh, yep, yep, this is not a good place for throwing daggers. Let's throw a charge one. Didn't really want to attack him, but uh, that's, I guess, the problem of it. There we are. So the controls aren't certainly aren't perfect. Uh, they're, you know, they've got that early 3D wonkiness, but they are pretty good. Um, I've got to say, and considering this is just a demo, the full game it may well be better. Actually, better equip the copper shield as well, so that we can actually block. Something I have not been doing. This fat zombie apparently didn't want to fight, he uh, was a bit of a pacifist, but no escape for him regardless. Okay, so these health fonts of course restore our energy, and uh, since I'm actually up here we might bring out the throwing daggers again. Okay, it looks like they're a little bit out of my range. So down we go. Not sure why they're glowing, uh, they don't seem particularly difficult to fight. Oh, okay, it's, it's the water particles, that's why. I don't know why, but I had the strangest idea that uh, water would actually harm you in this game, but I think I'm just thinking of uh, the Legacy of Cain series, or at least, um, what was it? Uh, I don't know, but the one was on Dreamcast. <laughs> okay, so is this the exit? Tread softly. Zarek awaits beyond these gates. The master meets with the demon from the mausoleum. Hatching plots of purest evil. Forgotten nobodies would be wise to make themselves scarce. <laughs> Alright then, so uh, I guess we'll move on and we'll see what this demon is. But first we actually get to visit the Hall of Heroes. So uh, this is actually where you can get special upgrades. But unfortunately the demo doesn't want me to see that, so... Uh, yeah, there we go. So battle with an arsenal of fiendish weapons. Uh, free roaming 3D environments that will strike fear in the bravest of players. And you can see that there are, are actually a good variety of locations, and some of them do look quite good for PS1. But, um, yeah, just talking about lighting effects there. Challenge about powers of darkness and untold magic. But, uh, yeah, that, that is medieval, so it's a uh, pretty enjoyable gothic hack and slash, uh, with some really, uh, uh, shall we say, intricate level design, and uh, it's just a lot of fun. So if you're looking for a game of this sort of uh, style, saying with a, maybe a little bit of a horror element, um, then I would recommend checking it out. I imagine it's pretty cheap. But, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.